going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone. We're going to chat with Mariko Patterson of Forge Studios and Ron Manweller of Enduring Images this morning. You've heard a little bit from both of them. Um, Enduring Images Chief Operation Officer Ron Manweller has a degree in chemical engineering and is a former executive of the DuPont Company with 29 years in research, operations, and business leadership. Ron was on the leadership team of the Imaging Technologies Strategic Business Unit during his last seven years with DuPont. He has been with Enduring Images since its launch in 2003. Uh, good morning, Ron, and uh, I believe you're going to introduce Mariko for those folks who don't know her well. Thank you for that intro, uh, Karen. Um, gosh, if you give me the opportunity to introduce uh, uh, Mariko, um, this could go on for a long time. I've known Rico how long? 15 years, maybe? I work for sandwiches. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you work for sandwiches. By the way, what people <laughs> might not know about you, Mariko, is not only are you a brilliant artist, oh, but you're stop. also a brilliant chef at the same time. Oh, stop. Go on. Go on. <laughs> um, stop. So, but I, I do have to say that uh, Mariko lives up in Canada, uh, our neighbors to the north. Mm -hmm. They, I think, are leading the United States in the direction of more and more, uh, what shall I use the word? Socialism is a bad word here in the U.S., but <laughs> we're getting more and more fond of it. Um, she, uh, her headquarters are in, are in uh, Nova Scotia. She runs uh, a studio called Forge Studios. Tight ship. Say again? Tight ship. It's a tight ship. It's a tight, tight, tight shift. Her her art is special and very unusual in that it is very complex with lots of layers, uh, a lot of thought, very clever concepts all woven into beautiful design. And her art really stands out to me as being probably the most thoughtful and interesting art of, uh, of any sculptor, ceramicist that I've Oh, did I lose your, your, I think I lost your audio. Maybe I didn't. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I see. We go. Do we lose Ron's audio? Okay, here we go. Am yeah. I back? Yeah, you are. Okay, so I'm going on and on. But uh, let me just say that um, uh, you'll see in a moment the genius of Mariko Patterson uh, as she goes through some of these slides and and don't shake your head when I call you a genius because kiddo, you are. Well. So here's Mariko Patterson. Okay. So as I as I warned everybody, <laughs> who's Karen and thank you, Karen, for being our, our tech support too out of Florida. And and thank you to everyone from Japan to Europe to America to all of North America who set their alarms and showed up this morning. Um, this is a bit of a put your seatbelt on and, and hold on for the ride presentation. I'm really glad that uh, if you got a chance to see Justin's show yesterday, I didn't because I just, I didn't, but I, I am drinking out of his, one of his mugs this morning, just as, as an homage. Um, my name is Mariko Patterson and oh yes yeah, seatbelt on so I'm going to do a, a bit of a uh, talk about my work and then there's going to be an embedded video because I have technological issues and I'm really hoping that that goes okay and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about the clients that I that I um, work for or you know ask me to make decals and I'm really going to try and say decals as opposed to socialist decals. <laughs> <laughs> you can speak Canadian. I can speak Canadian. Oh, look, there's a picture of younger me in my studio. And actually, I'm upstairs behind my Blackbird because it's far more flattering and a little less chaotic. But I just wanted to thank Ron and friends and Mary Beth and the team, Patrick, Super Yoda Tech, for, for allowing me to present and wax poetic and on and on about the printer system that I got from Enduring Images, which, as you know, maybe, maybe not, it is in Colorado. And I have had the a uh, chance to visit them. These are my assistants. This is Mr. Tubes on the left. This is freckle face Bernard in the middle and the elder statesman Rodney on the right hand side. Useless, but very cute. I am from Vancouver, BC, which is, I like, always like to position people, you know, it's above Seattle. It's a very beautiful place. Um, lots of, lots of great dining there. 
boy, is it expensive now, but it's a really beautiful place. And I went to Langara College, which was part of a community college system there. And then I skedaddled off to Calgary, Alberta to finish up one degree. And then I went down to Kent State University in Ohio to finish up my master's degree. And then through um, the magic of online dating and getting married and then not getting married and then getting married and not getting married and in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So this is where I live now. And for those of you who are you know, busy looking at a map, we are just above Maine and it's a tiny, tiny little place. And it's very, very beautiful. And of course, full of lobsters too. Um, previous photos of a very clean studio. It's cluttered, organized chaos right now, but this is older photos from a magazine, for a magazine shoot. Uh, that's the, the super elder, not with a statesman now, Mr. Pickles. And a couple shots of the other side of my studio. This is a piece in progress that, that has been used in promo stuff before. And sometimes when I'm organized, my decals live in in shelving units and sometimes they just bust all over the place but I'm kind of like a hamster I like to tread things up and live amongst everything I want to give a shout out to American Howard Kotler who is sadly no longer with us he passed away in the 90s um, influenced by the the funk movement and and he was the first person when I was an undergraduate student that I glommed on to his use of decals separating them merging them together screen printed I was just amazed. I mean, I you you see decals on your grandmother's place and such, and that's fabulous, and I love them to death too. But his political activism and uh, his wit and his humor was something that really stuck with me. I should have included uh, an image of, excuse me, Remus Viscurda's work as well in there. He's he's he is still with with us thankfully, and does a lot of decal work as well. Anyways. Uh, I have some in, in between kind of working shots. Huh. So this, this is my like thumbs up to, to <laughs> thumbs up to Howard Kotler. This is a screenshot from my from my web page, and I just wanted to include it. Uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe. I tend to have a lot of females in my work. Karen and I were talking about it. being National Women's something month. There you go. But she she pops up quite a bit as a a, a symbol of, of strength. Um, in my work, and you can see uh, where I've applied the decals there. Uh, another another uh, photo of work in progress on the left-hand side. I, again, like I like to show things in progress. And then on the, the right-hand side, this is a ramen bowl that was commissioned of me. And the Virgin Mary is swimming amongst a, a, a bevy of a bevy of noodles. So I, um, I know Ron thinks I'm a genius, but I like to merge all sorts of different concepts together in my work. The Wonder Woman, which Karen and I were also talking about previous to, to jumping on here, is, is she's a, a theme and a person and an icon, an entity that, that pops up. I know that one mug lives in Ron's office studios. So uh, yes, she's, she's always with us. And Frida Kahlo is amazing. And you know what? I got to give full props to Madonna. You know, I like some of her entities more than others, but she, I got some requests. But the one thing I want to say is that, or not just the one thing I want to say, but I should, I should give a little bit of a history of how I found Enduring Images. And I'm just going to say it, Ron. I bought a printer from somebody else and I was so dismayed that I, uh, and, th and thankfully I did okay in my divorce that I was able to rebuy a printer. And Ron and his team have become family to me, truly, not only as far as support goes, um, you know, like just encouragement goes, and they really walk me through everything, but they've provided this amazing technical support. Um, I should say that I really love drawing. I really love surface design. I really love layering of textures and glazes. And the one thing to note, and it's not a bad thing, but in the printer system, there is no white toner. So it's reliant on your background color. It can be white if you want everything to appear very bright. But then you can see with, you know, how I overlay it on top of the drawings and such to create those different kinds of layers and concepts. I also really like making decals of the drawings that I do. When I first got the printer, I actually, it actually took quite a while for me to figure out like what I was going to make decals of because um, it's like walking into a record store. And I mentioned that in my, in my demo video 
it's it's like I just I was like a kid in a candy shop. I didn't know what to make. So I was asked by a gallery, Visions West Contemporary, also in, in Colorado, in Denver, uh, to to do a series of work. And so these cowgirl pieces were the result of it. And I think one's name is Rhonda and one's name is Judy. And on top of the decals, like the red drawing illustration that I put down, I actually layered China paints on top of it. So sometimes decals is not actually where it ends. It just keeps on going from there and then they get gold luster and then they get, and then they get, but you can see where the decal overlaps drawn entities and glazed entities to, to make things sing. You can slap a decal on the middle of a white plate, commercial plate, and Bob's your uncle, you're, you're set. You can also cut them and make them really tiny and inset them to be very, very subtle and crafty as we are in Canada. So look how clever that is. The budgie is looking at himself in the mirror and the mirror is actually gold platinum luster. But then of course, it's an actual photo of a budgie. I know, mwah, mwah, so smart. And then, uh, Sometimes I have a hard time making really long pieces of cracks and this and that. So I often go to, I don't know if you have home sense, but you have Marshalls, we have winners, things like that. So I'm always raffling through like what's on the shelves, what's on sale. And so I know this piece lives in, I know this piece might live with somebody who's with us today in Seattle. And so this is Mao Zedong playing ping pong with himself. And it's like festooned with a whole bunch of China paint there. I don't like to leave any surf, any bit of the surface uncovered. These pieces I sourced from an antique fair in Toronto, and they're actually ewers. I don't know if they're wine ewers or what, but they're really cheap and cheery Chinese, you know, made things. And you can see that on the bottom of, of, of the pieces on the right hand side. But uh, I blocked out everything in red china paint, and then I just inserted all those empty areas with with more decal work because because, because you can. And then these are actually some of my favorite pieces that actually live in Tokyo now. Um, I found these honeycombed pre-made pieces at one of those said kind of box stores. But, you know, sometimes I just pick up stuff from like, I gotta, gotta run back to the studio and make it, and make it, make it, slap some on. So I do sculptural work. And I mean, there's so many definitions of sculptural. sculptural. My kiln is only about 17 inches tall. So that's where these Winnebago pieces max out. Oftentimes, like with the Wonder Woman pieces, I do reuse the themes um, over and over and over again. So she, did, she of course, ended up on there. And then I don't know if, if you're a ceramic geek like a lot of us are, there's the ubiquitous willow pattern. These live in, in Flint, Michigan's Museum of Art. And so I deconstructed the actual plate and a lot of China painting, but then like little, little bits of decals on there. I even made like, you know, like Louis Vuitton luggage. Those are like personalized willow, willow bagel, willow bagel luggage that's on top of there. Uh, I mentioned this in the, this is like my super secret pro tip uh, in the, in the video and it's super meta. It's so I took a vintage decal and I put it on a commercial tile and then I took a picture of it and guess what? I'm never going to be out of that vintage decal anymore. So wait for the video and you hear about that. And then the finished piece that you saw in the earlier, you know, lead up, lead up photo, uh, photo there. So these actually just sold to a collector in Pittsburgh. So bye, but have a nice life in your new fabulous home. Um, and again, all sorts of layers, all sorts of color, all sorts of glazes, and your eye perceives them very differently, right? So if everything was just glazed in one mono glaze and it's probably more apparent to the the super ceramic folk out there it reads as one thing but again with the decal it's like it's like putting accessorizing it's like putting nail polish on or something on top of your nails and it just makes it pop and i tend to use the 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 lamination process that, that produces the glossier decals and ron can you can contact Ron and talk about like the, the matter services and, and um, laminate papers that can be used there. But I kind of really like those that pop for me. This is, I call this my Minga Ding Ding piece. And so again, more meta stuff, pots on pots on pots. And so some of the, some of the decoration is absolutely China painted. And then some of them have actually just modified the decals off of that I've found off of the internet. And who could not mention Donald Trump? 
and his banana republic. I hope he's having a good golf game today. Anyway, um, I again, like I use photo, Adobe Photoshop Elements in a real haphazard way, and I mash everything together. And so, you know, there's bananas and oranges, and you're going to figure out what they mean, and his friend Stormy Daniels. <laughs> Anyways, here's the demo part that I inserted. And again, I'm really hoping that everything works here. So I'm going to hit play and disappear for a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and finish up. So let's see if this works. It might have to toggle for a minute. Let's see. If I stop share, if I stop share and start share, it might work. Is, is that okay? Oh, let's see. That's fine. Okay, hold on one second. Pause and then resume share. For some reason, it was doing a weird little thing before. Please work. Rut row. Okay, I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna start really quick and then share and share and then that and then share oh boy i'd be really bummed if it did work uh-oh what should i do everybody um <laughs> do you have the video elsewhere oh, no, that's no. not in your thing okay. it's morning here Thomas at 8.46. Mm. And I got a better drink out of a decal mug for you. This is uh, a gal, Christine Torres from Ontario. Ontario. And I make the occasional batch of decals for her. So just pulled it off the shelf. She goes by at Schnortzies Pottery on Instagram. So check her out. Um, these are some of the works. Well, actually, I'm just pulling out a couple pieces because I realize that a lot of stuff is sold, which is not a, not a bad thing to have happen at all. But I thought I would pull out a couple works and I'm going to take my glasses because they get a little bit glary and I look like Arnold um, Schwarzenegger Terminator there. But these are some of the, a, a couple of the pieces that I use ceramic decals on. When I got system number one, I actually bought from another company and I'm just going to say that that did not go over so well. So when I met the Enduring Images team and I, and I licked my wounds and was like, I really, really, really want to get into this business. And I really, really, really want to own a printer. Ron and Mary Beth and the family really took me in. Um, you can see here, and I've never looked back, so to speak, but you can see here some of the, some of the, the decoration is painted with China paints and some of it's actually decal work. Uh, I, I actually kind of deep, the one thing, Ron, don't hate me for saying this, <laughs> is that um, artists like to screw around with <laughs> technology. So what one system is, is really great for, like printing decals on um, and applying them to commercial wares, which I do, and I have an example of that too. So I often buy commercial wear uh, oh, my voice is echoing in the vase there, uh, commercial wear and then buy decals and um, we yeah, have fancy bottoms too. And so I have a line, sort of a sub line of things that I do that way. But when it comes to like the handmade ceramics, sometimes really interesting things happen because it's a different type of glaze. It's not an industry produced clear glaze that goes on top. So you get just different, different effects and you know, you've got all of these you can, I don't know if you can see on the side, but oh, there's a lot of carving and such that happens. So you kind of have to muck around with how to get the decal on there. And now that I've been in it, what, a few years, I'm, I'm still learning and I'm, and I love still learning, but I'm, uh, you know, just trying to figure out all the ins and outs of things. So that's really what I want to talk about a little bit today is because I think that there are probably quite a few decal applying like basic decal applying videos on youtube to just get the get the um uh, you know the decal on the pot or the piece this is a, a lovely little piece for a neighbor friend i hope she's not watching uh that i took out of the kiln tomorrow so decals for me i mean again one can put them all over and call it a day and a good day at that right or for me 
I like to integrate them sometimes in subtle and not so subtle ways. So, you know, if you look closely, there's like a maple leaf in, in, in the like center of his jersey there. And then I use it to, you know, doll up the insides in this set. So uh, when I was in grad school, my illustrious mentor and professor Kirk Mangus, who sadly is no longer with us, he once took a picture of my, well, he took a picture of, piece, picture of my pieces when I was just going into grad school and he asked me if they were colorful. And I said, yeah, look at all the color on them. And those of you in the ceramic know that if you make, if you make a white slip and then you add different colorants to it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's your eye perceives it as super colorful. Uh, if you took a picture of it in black and white, it would actually read very mono kind of gray, you know, occupying the same kind of mm, line. So he really encouraged me to use all sorts of under glazes and slips and matte glazes and glossy glazes. So you get a push, a visual push and pull, not only like what you actually think you're seeing with your eyeballs, but what you're interpreting with your brain. So when color decal printing systems came out, and we're really only gonna talk about the best one, right? But when it when they came out, then that became because it used to be that I worked for Matt Nolan for a little bit. You know him, yay yay, in New York, and we worked on a project, and I think we had to order like five hundred sheets of screen decals. Like that's an incredible cost. You know, I I'm, I swear to you, probably ten years later, fifteen years, he's probably still got those decals back and positive. He does. So rather than rather than um um you know, have to go that route where you are forking out tons and tons and tons of money. It's great that we have either the ability to buy our own system or we have the ability to get somebody to make decals. I myself, and I probably will repeat this a, a couple times during the presentation elsewhere, but I shy away from doing these giant orders. So I get requests for these giant wholesale orders. I'm more interested in making a few sheets for small artist studios. Um, my friends at Milestone Decals, all of them on that a couple of times, but that's like their whole business. So I send people down to them. They also do screen printing. They also do luster work, which is, you know, super interesting. But for me, I like just doing small runs for people. And the things that they send me back, like picture wise, are in and occasion, occasionally I get I get the nice uh, mug mm -mm -mm, or cup to enjoy which is really great. But the, the images that they send me are really, really heartwarming. So it's nice to see what goes out there in the world. I find that I'm also able to act as a bit of a, um, not a tech per se, because I'm, you know, it's not like I'm a licensed tech or anything like that. But there are some weird things that happen in the handmade ceramics world that I would never want to bug Ron about. Forget it, Patrick about, so send them to me. Anyway, um, so like in the online world of decal tutorials, I bet they say, cut them out, soak them in water for 30 seconds to a minute, apply, rub on, uh, fire, da 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 So you can look those up and that's really easy. And I'm sure, um, I'm sure there are a million out there. And that's one, that's one thing to consider. The other thing, what I want to talk about today in particular are a couple things. You can see my, I call them Bucky, the bucket. But I've got this bowl in there and I actually have the water, well, it's cooled down a little bit, but it's actually quite warm. And the reason for that is that, the, of course, this bowl has a rounded concave and convex surface. And in my brain right now, I'm like trying to, you know, denote the difference between the two, but it is before 9 a.m. Um, so what happens is if, it, it, again, normally you would soak decals in mm, lukewarm water. Again, this is, you know, just depends on how quickly you're working or if you're just applying one on or many on, it totally depends. But I like getting it quite warm, not burning hot, but quite warm. And I put this guy in there and I let it get up, I let it warm in temperature. And then I take a decal and I won't be boring you by cutting up a thousand decals, but I um, take a, you know, this is, this is more about like when you want to get a decal on a bigger surface. So actually this is a little bit of a two-parter thing here because I see what's going on. Um, the amazing thing, and I'm not going to 
try and sound like a big infomercial for enduring images because I love them and I will gush. And if you ever want a, like a written or, or oral recommendation about them, just give me, give me, drop, drop me a line first. Don't just give me a yell. But um, these decals, as opposed to like the decals that you might get on your grandma's china, which we love our grandma's china, but they don't have the same cover coat durability, right? And probably after years of work at night, things start to scratch up. These aren't going anywhere. They can go in your tiles in your pool. They can go on tiles outside and they're going to be really durable. For that reason, um, they're printed on a paper that has a laminate on it. And there's a couple different ways of going about that, which Ryan can tell you about. But um, for that reason, when it's fired on, I can't show it to you because, well, I could try and show it to you, but you, you, can't, you won't be able to actually see it. But the laminate is a teeny bit thicker and it leaves this the teeny little line. It's, ba it's barely decipherable. Um, because the laminate fires glossy, if you're firing your decal onto a matte surface, you will have more of a difference. But in my mind, I'm always looking for like what can make a piece interesting. So sometimes it actually is a bonus for me when I've got like different types of homemade, I'll just call them that, like, you know, shop glazed surfaces when you've got a, a difference between matte and shiny, matte and shiny. But for the most part, I'm putting these, these lamp, this laminate that fires glossy onto glossy. They do, you can, and Ron will help you out, get other types of paper that will um, fire for matte. They've just got, you know, different things going on. But I kind of stick to this and I kind of print on this just solely because a lot of, you know, um, all the materials come from Germany. So I got to I gotta think about that. Anyway, so what I try to do is I try to cut very close the edge of the printed area, of course, save for Mr. Tiger's tail. Because if I cut out Tiger's tail, it became, becomes very loose and flimsy. Likewise, I was going to talk about these flamingos, but I might be able to do a two for one in this in this demo. So if I was cutting out Mr. Flamingo, if I were to cut out those tiny little legs, boy, I'd be in for some ripping and tearing, and that's a pain in the butt. No, no one wants that. So what I would do with Mr. Flamingo, and isn't it funny that Karen and Rob and friends are in Florida? <laughs> So this one's for you guys. But uh, so if I were to cut up and in here, those would get really spindly, most likely tear, most likely you want to pull your hair. Out. So I cut loosely around the whole thing and even loosely around the neck. I'm not going in too, too close. I'll tell you why. One sec. So toggling back, um, I'm going to take this. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to take that guy out. I'm going to let that warm up a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dip Mr. Tiger in there. And again, the temperature is quite warm. I suppose I could have I could have measured it's it's like you know if you're not having like a nice hot bath, do I leave it in there? No, because the plastic will fry and it you know curl up. So you just want to dip it in really quick. And then what I've got, and I'm going out of the screen here for a minute, is I've got a dampened um, uh, piece of sponge. And so what I what I do is I either just run this whole sponge under water right before I decal and then wring it out really, really well and then go make a copy and come back and it's perfect consistency. Or you can take a little spritz spritz and make a dampened surface. So this acts as a bed. And so if I want to, if I'm working with a bunch of decals, like say I've got all these tiny, tiny, tiny little bitty bit bits, for me to take each one of these little bits and dip it in and na, 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 and use it and dip it in and na, 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 and use it. it takes a long time so what i tend to do is i take and i guess i will forfeit some of these and put them, I'll, I'll put them on something a little later so what i'll do is i'll take a bunch of them and oftentimes i'll have like 50 and i'll lay them all out so by dunking them in that quite warm water first and not letting them sit in there but then like letting them sit on the dampened sponge is that the the dampness comes up through the paper backing and then literally within a couple of minutes, look, within a couple of minutes, I can slide it, slide it right off there, right? Nice. There's a gumminess between the paper and the laminate that you want to retain. That'll help stick it on there, which is really great. And I'm sure that this guy is, he's, he's ready to go too. Let's see, can you see? Yeah, you can see that. 
There's something deeply satisfying about sticking things on sticky on stuff. So I'm also going to take Mr. Flamingo, the Flamingo Kid, and soak him as well. Now, um, when Ron and friends are applying their decals, I mean, they, they, you know, their number one business, I do believe, is, is helping us out and selling printer systems. But they do have occasion to apply decals to things in their own studios. And, you know, they're dealing with a very, usually a very, very flat surface. Sometimes I'm sure they deal with curved surfaces too. But, you know, as ceramic artists, like home ceramic artists, studio ceramic artists, like the shapes are all over the place. And so it's very hard, like with that vase piece, if it's got a lot of carved edges, it's really hard to get the, get the plastic laminate tucked in there. And so what I sometimes do is I'll bump up the temperature of the water and right before I apply it to the pot, I will dip it back in there and let it get like one last blast. And that'll really, really soften up the plastic. So by bringing up the temperature of the pot and bring it to the same temperature as the ceramic decal, you're going to find that the plastic is really pliable. Still, you get these slight, um, roughly bumpy areas and i know that uh, like as per directions one can use use like a, a you know like a rubber ridge or a rib or a silicone kind of squeegee and they work super great on the flat surfaces but i find that taking a good quality paper towel not the dollar store don't get that hunk of junk splurge for i'm just going to say a bounty or something like that like a really good paper towel. The reason being is that you don't want all those fibers to break down and dollar store paper towels are just bunk. So what I'm doing, and I'll see if I can bring the, and we're actually going to do this. I'm going to turn down the light on this because I found that the, you can see the shadows a little bit more. So what I'm actually going to do, uh, my dad was actually a sign painter for many, many years and then he tried out the vinyl sign painting business for a little bit before he just was like, eh, I'm going to retire. I'm done, done. But watching, if you've ever applied like a screen protector to your iPad or vinyl sign painting, I tend to work, we tend to work from the inside out to get all the bubbles out. Bubbles are your enemy. Bubbles are your enemy. So what i actually do and i won't be able to do this here is i actually look at it on the side and if you if you kind of hold it up to the light you can see you can see if there's a tiny little raised area you really want to get back into the center of the image and work your way out um back in the day when i did not have a decal printer i would buy decals off of say ebay you know and i still do buy those vintage decals um and i'm going to I'm going to throw in a pro tip there. I'm going to look you in the face. <laughs> so if you buy those vintage decals and you know you're down to your last one, you know what you do? You fire that on a commercial white tile so you get a really clean fire on there. Then you take a picture of it. And then if you have the ability with like Adobe Photoshop elements or something like that, that's what I use to put things together. I'm, I use Photoshop to actually process the whole and print everybody's decals, but you take a picture of those images on the tile. They got the coffee burps. And then you, you, you know, you can cut it out with Adobe Photoshop elements. I can help you with this too. And then we put it into a program and you never are without those vintage decals again. Do not tell anybody I told you this. Um, anyways, back to the regular programming, but hope you get the gist. You'll never be without. Okay, so we've got all the air bubbles out, and I'm pretty sure. And I, you know, after I use the good paper towel, I really mash in there with my fingers. Of course, when you're starting out, um, you might actually experience a, a bit of a tear here and there. Now, what should I do? This might be fun. I know I put my, there it is, exact knife. I have to apologize because you. I wanted to find a, a fresh blade here and I can't. And then I was gonna clean it and I was like, ah, oh, screw it, whatever. So I like to use exacto knives. I mean, it's just, just your taste, just your taste. I like the rounded ones because I find 
that I can kind of roll, I can kind of roll into the plastic. Actually, yeah, I can kind of roll into the plastic and then drag it along as opposed to starting off with a sharp point and doing that. So can you see this? Can you see this? I'm going to start here and I've got the tip, not at the very top, but a little bit down. And what I'm going to do, and this is the reason why I didn't cut out in between all those leggy leg legs, is that I'm gonna actually cut out the legs and the little parts. And sometimes I advise this to people. I just had somebody who wanted some, like a really long logo for a like a, a vineyard. And so the logo was really long and a really long line. And I said, cut wide around that line and then cut back into it, right? So that you're not dealing with all those ding dingly dangly bits. And then you just peel that back. Huzzah. So you've got to, I've just cut out all that there, right? And then same with here. I'm going to do the same and pull that back. And then ever so gently peel that back. You need to do this while the decal is um, not like immediately super freshly applied. Like say I want to put a, put a bunch of tigers on this piece here. And then, you know, then I, you know, with, within the hour, I think would be good. They do set up pretty expediently, although um, it depends. Like I find that when I've applied a bigger decal, I actually like to let them sit overnight and just like be one with the ceramic surface. Sometimes I force a litter a little. I have a just like a, a radiator heat in the studio. So sometimes I'll I'll just pop them on there and that'll sort of speed dry them a little bit. Also, the room where my decal printer is, I have a dehumidifier to keep things, to keep the level of the china paints even. So if that's going, especially in the summer, it does, I don't usually have it on in the winter because it's fairly dry as here. Uh, but in the summer, I definitely need, to, definitely need to have it on. I also put all my dampware in there. I also do my, my clay reclaim in there. So it's like my multi-purpose room. It's also a disaster. <laughs> Anyways, so that's kind of putting a piece on a rounded surface. It's a little bit more difficult for the inside, but you absolutely can do it. And it's so funny, all the other little decals that I put on the foam have now, have, have now stuck here. I'll deal, I'll deal with you guys in a little bit. So let me apply one more here, but I'm pretty, pretty you know, okay, so now the, the tiger and, oh, see, and I actually, see how easy, not that all the decals rip that easily, I promise you, but I just was a little bit careless there, but we'll just, for, for, you know, these things happen, it's good, good for them to happen. This would have happened in a live demo anyway, so I'm going to put that on there, and again, I think if I were to use a rib, it would actually pull it quite a bit. Um, and I'm actually going to do one more, I'm going to do one more application here, and I'm not going to make this really super close fancy. It's just for, just to talk about one last thing. So I've got my flamingo on there. And I'm going to let him set up for just a minute and I'm going to squeeze out the air bubbles there. And I uh, put the, put the uh, word love on there. So if you want to have say wording on your piece and this might actually be a little bit too big of a decal to do the demo with, but if you have the, the warm to hot water, you know, hottish water, and you swirl it around in there for a bit, and your pot's been brought up to temperature. What you can do is if you print, if you design your sheet that it's a very straight, it's a very straight uh, text line. What you can do is if everything's if everything's quite perfect, and it might take a little bit of practice, you can actually. I won't. I, I think this is too big of a decal to do to to get the gist of it. But what I can actually do is hold it with these two fingers here. And I can pull it up a little bit here. Oh, it's doing it a little bit. And what it does is it bends to the shape of the pot, just the slightest curve. Because if you apply a super flat, you know, stretch of decal to it, it will, it sometimes looks a little bit off. The perspective looks a little bit off. So those are some of the things that you can play around with. But I really suggest, even with the flat edged 
pieces here, you know, like the smoothest pieces here. I always, I always tend to take some time and soak them. Maybe what I'll do is I'll also drag this off here and use it on that piece that I just showed you, the flat piece. Uh, I have a four color decal printer and it's wonderful. Um, the red, I chose one, I actually have two ones. My other system, I don't use that much, but, and, and maybe Ron, I will take you, I, I might, you know, bump it up to, to be, to work with your, your new, 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 new system. So, um, but I, the one system that I have is really wonderful. I love the, the really warm reds that, did, that um, come out of it. So in some ways, like I should be demoing, I suppose with the color decals, but what is really interesting is when you have glazed areas and then you layer those decals over top, there is no white in the printer. There is no white ink in the printer system. So it depends on um, the background color that you have. So uh, there are, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a feeling that maybe Milestone does print white, I, which is which is great. And I know that there are a few other artists that I could dig around for you that, that maybe screen print white and that's, that's Coolio. But um, I really love playing around with the effects of like what you can get by putting the colored decals on top of colored glazes. Let's see if, what this looks like. So, I mean, and again, because they're not opaque per se, right? They're trans, almost like translucent. You're gonna get whatever colors underneath coming through what's coming over top. And uh, in the presentation, you will, I don't know if I'm doing, inserting this, I think I'm gonna insert this in between everything, but you will see in particular the Virgin of Guadalupe mugs that I do, and they have a lot of layers going on. Um, I also think that uh, while you can apply all these decals, I got it on the right way, one side's very shiny, that goes down. Um, while you can apply all these decals, you know, not attached to each other, I found that, um, you know, I don't know what it looks like on the commercial wear, but you can overlap them. And so sometimes, especially with these floral ones, I kind of connect the stems so they look like they're they're all of the same plant and, and swirling around again, like the Virgin of Guadalupe mugs. And so, you know, you can have little, oh, this way, this way. So you can have, you know, li little bits of overlap there. Again, some people like it, some people don't, but I find where you've got the decal layered, it actually pops and you get like super flashes of super, super, super glossy. So your eye kind of does this mm -mm, mm -mm thing that's really interesting too. So again, that's kind of where I'm at with my decal world. It's always evolving. I'm always challenged by, again, the shapes that I'm sticking them to. Um, when I first got the printer system, I actually had a really hard time figuring out like what to print for myself. It's like walking into, a, remember record stores or like, I don't know, like walking to craft stores and I had no idea what, what, it, what was on my shopping list, like what I was gonna buy. So it took me quite a while to figure out what to print for myself. And I think by, by virtue of talking with lots of artists and like what they're putting their things on, like I've learned a lot. I always, that's, part of teaching that I always love is like, as much as I teach, I like to get back from people. So, so I hope those are some good pointers. Again, the basic stuff is pretty basic. You know, it's like water slide tattoo kind of thing. But when you get down into it and you're ready to do some nitty gritty, then um, give me a yell. I'm happy to help you out. And I'm always happy to spread the good word of enduring images. So back to the rest of the presentation. See what I did there? <laughs> nice. Mariko, we've got a couple of questions. Let's start with an early one about copyright issues on decals. Can I can I just finish? Can I bomb, yeah. bomb through a couple of other things? Sure. Okay, I'm just gonna do this really, really, really quick. I know I'm probably going way over time, but I, I gotcha. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the, the business that I do and um, I'm selling myself, I'm not selling myself. It's okay, whatever. Uh, I, have a, I have a decal love section of my website that's again, I like doing small runs for, for studios. And oftentimes I send logos out and such, and I never see where they show up. So it, I have been hustling all sorts of artists 
to send me some images for, for this presentation. So Gabrielle Lapp, heavy on the Canadians again, but she's out in a beautiful area called Revelstoke, BC. So uh, I'm all super thrilled to see what her decals have shown up on. Catherine and Gold now is a fantastic artist in Ontario and her daughter has a line of body lotions and soaps and such. And so they put together these amazing packages for charcoal and rose petals. They actually sent me a gift package, which was really, really lovely. But Katrina's work is amazing too. My neighbor girls across the fence from me, they draw pictures of my wiener dogs. So I always scan them and I pop them back onto mugs and, and give them gift. I mean, we don't actually have lanes a lot of the time in Nova Scotia. So I just meet them at, I'm like, what are you kids doing? And I like give them new mugs every few months. Um, this is an amazing artist. She sent me these drawings. Ron, you got to get a hold of her. Lisa McGrath, she's in Calgary. Uh, she sent me these drawings and I was like, what are you putting them on? And she sent me this. So this is a real example of the texture, like the push and pull, you know, because all that, all those bumpiness, it's like you super visceral. And then she's got these amazing drawings that she pops on there, like so stunning. And then funny enough, her sister, Teresa Johnson, who I went to school with, she was doing all sorts of other stuff with her life and she got back into doing ceramics. And so how apropos to make wash your hands soap dishes. Um, Caleb Romano is out of Edmonton, Alberta. And I'm, I have a smaller sheet system, eight and a half by 11. What, the other is 11 by 17, right? And so uh, he, he orders sheets of things and he cuts some of these little hexagon, um, decals to put on his pieces and he's just become like the super duper duper star so I'm always happy to help him out and another BC artist uh, Sarah from Bow and Antler Northwest Goods and on one side of I don't know if they're two separate mugs but I, I really like how she's got that bar low relief texture on one side of the mug and then she's using her her drawn images that she sends me again it's somewhat of a surprise sometimes I just never see what these these decals end up on. So it's been really nice. Barb Chipton, and I have to move this because it's Bruce Pearson is her friend. He did these amazing drawings. And I actually had to do a, quite a bit of futzing around with the graphics because they, they were so fine line that we had to fine tune them. But she wrapped them around these tumblers um, cups and they're so interesting. Like what sometimes gets presented me just turns into something like what, you know, like the motion and the movement that happens in these pieces is amazing. Jamie Gray is also out of Calgary. She collects a lot of vintage wear, found wear, and she's got some pretty saucy images. So I had to like raffle through and see what I could actually show you, but a lot of family stuff. And um, I especially like the piece on the right hand side. It's a, a rest like Chinese restaurant wear, very typical, but she's just sort of slid in these subtle decals. And so, you know, you've got that skull piece just sort of looming about like the, the, the background there, which I just, again, a conceptual push and pull of things too. BJ Watson is a friend out of Huntington, Pennsylvania. And I would just crack up because she sends me all these X-File images, but she layers them with uh, eBay found decals too and so there again another push and pull between how those read like the grandma china stuff and then the glossy pop pop of the enduring images system uh lisa i'm gonna i'm forgive me lisa lisa burnell brethur who's out of arizona um she and talk about copyright she was worried about like you know how to use how to use um this this sporting you know group team thing but I, I don't know if it was for her kids or what but I just cracked me up like she's got breadsticks and things over these commemorative platters she's also an amazing mixed media artist that in, in you know uses ceramics in a lot of her pieces uh, in process piece but she also sent me these beautiful decals of moss and you know I just it, it she was just so happy and, she, and it's so really lovely when people post what the results that they get and again it just feeds my teaching you know, my brain and my teaching back and forth. Jennifer, I know you're somewhere out there on this Zoom. Jennifer's somewhere out in the wilds of Newfoundland. And her drawings just make me crazy happy, as everybody does. But she draws images from her community. She draws images of people at work. And this blew my mind yesterday. Talk about layering. And I have a friend in Ontario that I would really love to gift one to. She drew these images of these welders and then used gold luster as the spark, spark, sparks on there. 
I mean, I just, again, Ron, like they just, they, you know, my work, my mind's genius, but then you've got this on top of it that just really make, and you can see how they look over different types of glazes too. Um, I'm not, I don't know that much about glass. I don't know that much about uh, decal application with glass, but Todd Zafranovich of Edmonton is new, a newer client to me. And he just gifted me a couple of smaller sort of tumbler shot glasses. And he's layered these with some silver leaf in these beautiful, beautiful glasses with, um, you know, uh, images from the Saskatchewan and North River. And so those are really wonderful to see again, you know, those guys are on their own. And then Jocelyn Watson is a Calgary artist and she's been with me from the very beginning. Thank you, Jocelyn. Also works with Slump Glass and I'm happy to see that she's putting some things onto ceramic wares as well. And she has got an online shop that you can check out but she also works at farmer's markets there, you know, around town when she gets going. Anyway, I, oh, and then she's super into cycling. And so I really love her design sensibility and how things are put together. So, I mean, the possibilities are just endless. I could just, you know, I could have gone through my feed and my customer fees for forever, but you get a little bit of the gist, but I just want to thank you. And I'll just uh, leave this here, I guess, or in the next one. But I just wanted to thank you, Ron, for always like providing so much support. And, you know, I like our off the cuff phone talks too. Those, the, that's a good thing too. And I send super love to Mary Beth and of course to Patrick for helping me out like <laughs> with my systems. So, but back to the questions, copyright. You know what? I don't sweat, I don't sweat it too much. I I am pretty quiet about like the Wonder Woman stuff. Um, I try, I try, I try to pe pedal that as like fan art, so to speak. I don't make that many. And, and in fact, I've kind of uh, because I work so slowly and each of those pieces that I make take four or five firings. Uh, they take quite a long time for me to make, like, I, I don't make that much, that many mugs at some point. So I don't really worry about it, but I also don't like, I don't, I don't like hashtag things with Wonder Woman and this and that either. So, but I am sensitive and I'm also culturally sensitive as far as using images like the Virgin of Guadalupe and, and Frida Kahlo and such. So, you know, I like to do my homework before I, you know, feel like I own it and have every right in the world to use it. So hopefully that answers one question. Mm -hmm. um, next question is um, what temperature of your kiln or what do you pre-program at? For these decals? Mm -hmm. Well, Ron, this is where we might, you know, where the pedal hits the metal and we might have to, uh, uh, you know, I forget, I forget where I'm, what, <laughs> <laughs> what you've, Every kiln is a little bit different. So I find for me, and I have a cone art kiln and it's got a double wall and it gets very, very, very warm. I actually, and this, I, I don't know if you fire in cones, Ron, but I actually, I'll just use the ceramic technology. I fire to somewhere, sometimes as low as 018 or 017. And I hold for 10 minutes so that the temperature doesn't arc and rise anymore because the, the reds and the yellows can be quite fragile. And in my information sheet, which I've sort of sourced from all, you know, some from enduring images, some from, because again, sometimes homemade glazes can have a little bit of a funny interaction. So I always try to add a little bit extra if I can for people to, to muck around with, you know, and if they have a real, like they burn everything out, then I, then I absolutely help them out. But I always suggest going a little bit lower, like starting as low as 018. And Sometimes it'll fire on and it'll be a little bit papery white and then you know it hasn't fired on enough. So better to just take it up slowly than burn everything out. So that's good life advice. Don't burn out. Uh, yeah, don't burn out. You, uh, there's, there's an interesting one here. Someone is uh, buying industrial ceramics to decal mm -hmm. and having a problem. Some older pieces don't refire well. Do you have a recommendation about how you select um, older ceramics to do decals with? Um, I haven't run into that problem myself. Interesting. Will that person message me? And if Ron has any, any um, suggestions, it, it, it could be just a glaze thing. One thing I find is if you buy vintage decals, sometimes like off of eBay and such, they will be really, really crumbly. And I would be, be ha I don't have it like in my mind, but there, you know, decals that are made for, for um, 
like making trains and such, you, you know, like the model trains, there is a spray that you can get that saw, like it actually adds like a, a slight lamination layer to the top of it. So it's almost like you're relaminating it and you can put it on your ceramic piece too. So I've only found one source for that and I can't remember where it is, but I, I know that I've saved it somewhere. Um, but have that person just shoot me, shoot me an email through my website because, um, because of, you know, if I can see the picture of it or what's happening, then I can maybe advise. There's always, there's always a workaround. The other thing sometimes I do with my pieces, if I have a funky glaze is that I'll actually just put down a, like a, an actual sheet or an area of the lamination just on its own. And it acts as a buffer in between the, what's happening with the glaze and then the decal on top of it. I know that sounds a little bit techy, but um, it's almost like putting clear nail polish. I don't even wear nail polish, but it's like putting clear nail polish on to protect your nails and then putting the color on top of it. So it has an extra base for things to fuse from. So it might actually need to be reglazed a little bit with something too. So there's always a oh, work. A couple of lamination questions. One is, can you repeat how you said earlier that the laminate changes in the decal? And then one just recently about, do you laminate after you make the decals? I think you were talking about that spray. Well, actually, Ron's going to be the super authority on this. But when I first started out with a system, I actually bought, I actually bought paper and then I printed on the paper and then I ran it through a hot lamination roller process. Now I can actually buy the paper pre-laminated and print on top of it. That's black magic that Ron can explain. I have no idea how that happens. So, so now I've removed that process of actually having to roll it. And, you know, stuff happens in that process. So I, that's a huge headache. I'm not certain about the first question about the relaminating of things, but. Um, uh, the first question was, uh, repeat, you were talking during your presentation about how the lamination, I think, of the decal changes in the water. Um, they'd just oh. like you to repeat that bit. Oh, well, you mean why soak it at a hotter temperature, per se? I think or so, yes. Oh, well, because it's cold and it's cold plastic, right? When you just said room, te room temperature plastic. So when I dip it in warm water, warmer than normal decal warm water, like lukewarm water, it actually, it just softens the plastic. You know, if you were to drop a plastic bag in, in warm water, it would just get quite pliable or saran. It takes on a saran wrap type quality, not quite that, that malleable. But I find if you just dip the decal with the lamination as it comes, it can not be super stiff. I mean, it's definitely pliable because it's being put into lukewarm water, but when you just dip it into and then let it set out in hotter water and then re-dip it back in, you do get more of a pliable surface to work with on top of the hot, on top of the hot pot. So, and it just sort of spreads a little bit more like butter, which is really nice. Totally found that out by accident because that's what artists do. Great. Um, so I am going to let everyone know we are, we are down. Some people have had to leave, of course, because we're beyond our time. We'll stay for about 15 minutes, Mariko, if you have time. Yeah. Um, and so if you would like to ask Mariko a question, unmute yourself. It's now set so that you can do that. Please be courteous and try not to step over one another. And Mariko, if you will unshare your screen, I will set it up so we've got a gallery view. Oh, okay. Uh, stop share. There, there we go. Oh, hi, Irene. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Barbara, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to understand that whole, you make the decal, and you are not putting it through the laminator anymore, correct? Because you're using pre laminated on top. paper. On top. Yeah. Right. And I know you're for, that's for your Endure uh, decals, correct? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be, I bought a paper, I printed on the paper, then I ran, then I put a plastic, the laminate on top and swam it shit through and then, and then pulled the things apart. This is so much easier the pre-laminated paper. But 
but the but the laminating process helps the decal process that's what i'm trying to understand what if you didn't laminate it would it not work as well it needs a lamination and ron if you want to step in at any time but it needs it needs to be stuck to something otherwise it doesn't have any way of adhering to the surface of your pot um you can i will step outside of the enduring image boundary just for one second in that you actually can use ron i don't know if you know this if you've ever tried this but let's just say you buy this plastic paper laminated paper that they use again why why fingernail technology i don't know but you know when you go to a nail salon and they print decals that go on your fingernails ron do you uh -huh. know about this you can you can run that paper through but it doesn't have the same um food safety quality to oh it. okay you know so it's very good and that is super pliable that that plastic is super pliable but it it's really good for sculptural work i just don't know the food safety issues okay. for that. and 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 that laminate is also infused with glaze too so that acts as a protector Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I, I can offer one. I can offer one ad. Uh, we, the reason we use lamination paper in our own work at Enduring Images, and by the way, we sell both the pre-screen papers and lamination paper. Uh, with lamination papers, we have the opportunity to put additives into the laminating film that you don't get with the pre-screen papers. And so, if you want to fire a low-temperature glass. Uh, we, there are fluxes that we have in our lamination papers that will melt down in the 600 Celsius area, which mm -hmm. enables you to decorate glass. Mm -hmm. We also have fluxes that melt that above a thousand, a thousand Celsius, so you can get high gloss finishes um, with decals made without lamination paper as well. So the, the, the lamination system gives us the flexibility to put additives in the lamination film that can enable you to decorate different kinds of things with different kinds of effects. Once again, we sell both the pre-screened and lamination papers. Uh, so it's an individual thing. I would say if Mariko likes it, I like it too. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, sh I should also mention that you have a newer system than the like what I bought from you earlier. And our friend Isaac Shu has, I believe, has that system where it fires higher. So that 018 that I was talking about is is specific to my system and you know my my set of work. Uh, but I and again, like your newer system, which I'm super interested in, fires. And I, I'm, I don't know what the cone equivalent is Fahrenheit and Celsius, but it does fire quite a bit higher and, <laughs> and maintains those reds and such. So Isaac and I are always chit chatting about that too. Yeah, I love Isaac. Great, great dude. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, you can fire uh, up above 06 with, uh, with the new. 06, one. kids, like 06. How flexible is that? So, you know, if you want to try something out, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm happy to share, share the wealth. <laughs> And contact Isaac for, you know, to, to get a sheet off of him, too. So, mm -hmm. Irene, did you have a question? No, I'm just watching. <laughs> Irene, Irene, I have to tell you a quick story about Irene. Irene uh, went to a Christmas party a number of years ago and won an auction for a cruise. And so what did she do? <laughs> she came to Nova Scotia and while her husband went and did the Bay of Fundy and all that stuff, she came to my studio and we spent the afternoon drinking wine and cutting out tiny decals together. Nice. She didn't see anything. She just <laughs> hung out. <laughs> She's from Seattle. Well, the Seattle, Washington area. Yeah. And any other questions? I think Barbara had another. Okay. You just mentioned, or he, I heard him in the background, Ron, about the, 06 fire. Could you explain that again? I, I was trying to write it down, but it didn't quite get into my brain. Well, you know, as time progresses, we continue to evolve the capability of the system. And at this moment, we have a toner set that is a pretty high fire toner set. It will uh, maintain full color saturation at a cone 06. You can go higher than cone 06, and you will begin to see some drop out in color. So if you want to fire to an 03 or an 02, um, you, you can do two things. You can you can do a special calibration for your printing system for that temperature specifically, or you can just go in Photoshop and pop the color density. And so, if you lose a little color in the firing, you've compensated for it. And how you Good make it. Yeah. 
It's uh, inspector number one. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Barbara, did that answer your question? Yes, okay, it Colette, did. Colette, yeah. you've oh. unmute yourself. I did, yep. Can okay, you hear me? go ahead. Hi, honey, how you doing? Good, hello, Good. Canada. Yeah, go Canada. Um, Marika, when you're doing your pieces that you're throwing, not the pieces that you're buying commercially, are you firing those to cone six? I'm firing them to cone six first and, um, and then firing down. So I always choose the top, you know, bisque and then fire cone six and then fire down. I use Mako stroke and coke lasers. Again, just stepping out of the enduring images um, circle for one second. I don't know if any of you use those. But they're they're made by Mako and they um, self glaze right above about cone 06, 06 ish right. Okay. So instead of I don't even have to put a clear glaze over top of it. Although I kind of do because I do so much carving. I like to fill in everything with just a little bit of the Soto clear actually out of Rat City Ceramics out of Seattle, Dev Schwarzkopf. But um, yeah, so I fired fire down. The only thing with the Mako stroke and coats is they don't like to go all the way down and then come back up. Like I can't, that's sort of, they get very weird and sugary. I can explain that to you later, but yeah, basically cone six. And then I work my way down to whatever the, the lowest temperature is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Can I ask a really quick question? Oh, hi, Larry. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you? I'm a fan. Yeah, well, uh, right back at you. <laughs> um, you might have addressed this because I had to come a little bit late, but I'm, I'm really intrigued by the China paint that you work with, right? And this is probably a question that I could look up very basic, but since we're here, I'll just ask you. Um, the, when you apply the China paint, is that the, ver is that the very last step that you do? Or do you, do you decal and then... China paint and then luster, is that the right order? I actually, you know, it just depends. I can actually kind of hit a, 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 a midpoint with the decals and the China paint. I find the decals need to go on first if you're gonna put China paint over top, right? Cause the plastic mm -hmm. laminate will resist. That was actually my next question. Right, but, I, but again, I've been experimenting with putting decal on decal to get these weird glossy pops which has been really fun and i'd you know be happy to you know if you want to send me a little sample i can help you out mm -hmm. but the china paint i who's who's a china paint expert from the west coast paul Louie, is that his name i think his name is and he was doing he was doing an nsika talk um i'm not an expert china painter but mm. irene has that irene's my china paint pusher there was a, a place in washington state called the good stuff and they're now in Florida. And if you look them up, they have these water-based mediums, which are really wonderful. Glycerin based oh, nice. and water-based. And they're they're slow, medium, and fast drying. And oh. you can add a little bit of cornstarch to it to give it a little bit of tooth while you're because you know, trying to paint is just a pain in the butt. It's like layer on top of layer on top of layer. But I put the decals down and then I fire them. And then if I'm going to try to paint on top of them, and I don't do that that often, but they do need to have that pre-firing. I tend to always put the luster on as a separate firing. I mean, most of my pieces get fired yeah. four or five times, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Also, I know it's in Canada, but um, there's a place here called Pottery Supply House just outside. Somebody's grunting, groaning. Uh, the Pottery Supply House is right outside of Ontario. And they sell quite significant amounts of over what they call overglazed pigment. I mean, it's China paint. But for 20 bucks, what you're paying for a tiny little vial from the good stuff, you're actually getting a, like a, a good quarter cup for like 20 bucks Canadian, which is like $15 American. You yeah. know, I'll order it for you. I'll send it down for you. But I found that mixed with that good stuff. I mean, some people just use like flat seven up or Sprite or whatever you call it down there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I had the, the tiniest titch of glycerin to make it move around. Remus Viscarda, bug him. He's, he's like a, he's got, he's got some of those old um, Amico overglazes too that they don't make anymore. And they will not, for the life of me, give me up the medium that they mix it with. So we're always like, farting around and talking about it, trying to figure it out. So 
Do you ever like the effect of using just like you had that tiger that you were putting on that pot earlier? Do you do you ever just put on like almost like a coloring book image and then go in with your china paint and just totally okay Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. oh absolutely absolutely you know and the thing about china paints is that they like to have a thin layer put on right like if you cake it on it fire it and it pops off so there's a level of patience that makes me nuts but the the results are totally worth it yeah yeah okay yeah. Thank you. Rico, Marilyn, you, you alluded to an information sheet, and she said, is there an information sheet, and how do we find it? Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll post it to my, um, two things. I'll post it to my website under the About section uh, as a PDF or something like that, um, but I also have under that, and it's not necessarily decal related, but it's called Star Techie. Get it? Like Star Trek, but Star Techie. And because I get so many questions about my Misha, my line drawing process, that I just put it all there. So there's glazed recipes and stain recipes and how I transfer the images onto pots. So I'll add that so, to the link to that for sure. Uh, yeah. So um, if you want to give us the link now, I'll type it in the chat and that way everybody will have it. It's under www.forestudios.com. And if you give me about a half an hour after this, I... There's, it's been snowing a hundred percent for the last five hours. <laughs> wow. You know, this Colorado. So my dogs are like, where are we going to the bathroom? <laughs> but I, I do say, you know, um, save your bucks up, but also, I mean, if I, if I may cross promote that, if you do, or if you are really into heavy duty, like line work, do check out Rosetta's sir print printers too they're very interesting and ron i might actually double up and get one of those in one day as well why not why just my empire yay <laughs> my empire printers <laughs> and hi jennifer you're amazing i gotta come up and visit you sometime katrina chater and i you know katrina chater ron we were just chatting about you yesterday. And I was like, she's like, what are you points middle of nowhere? I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Is Katrina on? No, I don't think she's on. I don't think she's on. But she loves you. We talk about you all the time. Actually, I think I think that I think we've talked about it that the Alberta College of Art needs a new tech person to to figure things out. So yeah. She's, she's terrific. Please tell her I said hello. I will. I will indeed. I is there is there one last question from everybody and then Ron will wrap us up. If there isn't a question, I will say, please write me anytime. I'm very terrible at answering the phone unless it's like WhatsApp, which you can find me there. But uh, I'm hi, Julia. But I'm I am around like a donut all the time. And I'm on I'm on the big Internet and then I'm on the little Internet all the time. So I'm happy to answer any questions and whatever I can't answer, I'll I'll. I'll call Ron and I'll find, I'll find it out for you. Good. We're all, we're all. Hey, Ron, do you want to wrap it up for us? Yeah, just a quick few uh, thank yous, Karen. I mean, I could not have done that. Rico, it's just awesome to hear from you and uh, everyone that knows you knows how generous you are with your information. Uh, you're a real gift to the art community. And those of you that don't know Mariko or Mariko's work, um, if you get to know her, you'll be as blessed as I am for having known her for the last few years. It's, uh, uh, she's a very, very special person and a brilliant artist. Uh, so thanks to all. You can tap onto the Enduring Dash Images website, www.enduring-images.com website. There's tons of information on that website, so I won't bore you with anything else. But uh, Brilliant job, Mariko. Thank you so much for your time and, and the effort you put into this. It was awesome. This will cost you five sandwiches, Ron. Deal. I'll make it 10. Woo! I <laughs> make some rum. <laughs> and so I'm going to put in a plug for Enduring Images. Please remember that Enduring Images is offering a 10% discount on four color printing systems for all in SICA attendees through April 30th, 2021. So if you are thinking about a printer, it's in your budget for this year, contact them before the end of April and you'll get your 10% discount. Thanks everybody.
Okay. And, and you know what? I'm actually just going to throw in one last plug. I know people are, I, I, I know where all of you are. I have all of your names. If any of you want like a, like a one little four color sample, like that initial slide I had with the rainbow and the unicorn, and you want to test it out in your kiln, just drop me a line. Just drop me a line, either uh, email or I'm on Instagram at Forge Studios, and I'd be happy to send you a little strip of something. So so you can pop it in your kiln and test it out for yourself and see how fabulous your work can be. You're the best, Mariko. Go back to your studios. Go make stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, all. Bye. Hey, Bye. Carol. You out, Karen? Yes. I'm still here. Thanks. I okay. hope that was like as crazy as it was. It was like, ah, I'm like sweating. <laughs> Well, you know, okay. gonna, every time I see your work, Mariko, I'm 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 an engineer, and so uh, having the opportunity to work with artists is always impressive to me because I have so little ability to do anything like that. But you take it to a different level, dude. You're, I mean, it's really phenomenal what you do. Well, I have to tell you, like all of these names that are popping up here, Irene does an amazing work, like with Frida Kahlo. Uh, I mean, she just does amazing work. Period. But like. I've made her many free decal decals and it's just wonderful. Larry Buller, he's, a, that's the first time we've actually like laid eyes on each other. Really amazing work, edgy work, but like super amazing. And uh, it's, it's great. It's great to have the, the community. So, um, you know, I don't know if you ever thought about it. Like I've never wanted to say you should do this or you should do that, but should you ever have like a, a like an enduring images, like, fan page where people can share stuff mm -hmm. i'd be happy to, i'd be happy to facilitate that too that's, that's a great idea we have talked about that often for years and years and um uh i would say we're taking the social media state of the art uh, we're getting but i love that idea that would happen that may happen this year and I love your offer. I think that really facilitates it. If it's that somebody like you kind of moderate that sort of thing. Well, I was listening to the chef Dave Chang. He's got a he's got a new podcast called Recipe Pod Recipe Club, and so they throw out they test three recipes a week, and then everybody just like they're not even on there, and they just people just chuck all their iterations of stuff, and so you know it might it might just be fun to see what people people do, you know, pass the love along. Okay, we will talk further about that. Great idea. Okay, apparently my dog needs to go out into the snow. <laughs> Our dog loves to pee in the snow. <laughs> all right, we're going to end. Thanks, okay. everybody. Thank you all. Thank you all. So, bye. Okay, bye. See you bye -bye. later. Bye, Mariko. Bye. Take care. <laughs>